Hello, everybody. My name is Ken Raggio, and I thank you for joining me here today for this Prophecy News Break on Thursday, February the 11th, the year 2021. I'm going to talk to you some more tonight about the mark of the beast because it is more and more increasingly apparent every day that we are entering into the end time scenario concerning the global economy, the world banking system, and the world currencies. And so we're going to talk about that tonight in a way that you've never heard this kind of discussion. I'm pretty sure of it because there's never been a day like this and we've never been at this point. And so I have some things to talk to you about. It's going to be a very practical uh, approach to this situation. You and I are headed into a period of time when uh, we're going to be faced with the decision as to whether or not we're going to take the mark of the beast. Now, if you've been told that Jesus is going to come back before the great tribulation, you've been told wrong. And I'll take you to the book of Matthew chapter 24 very quickly, just to give you some uh, reasoning for that. Jesus said in the 24th chapter, uh, verse 29. Now the first 28 verses of this chapter, Jesus talks about the signs of the last generation before his second coming. And he talked about the great tribulation. He said, there's going to be a man of sin is going to stand in a temple, fulfill the prophecy of Daniel, the prophet concerning the abomination of desolation in the middle of the last seven years, there's a seven year prophecy that has to be fulfilled. That seven years will begin when the Pope of the Roman Catholic church confirms a covenant with many for one week or one prophetic week, which is seven years. And in the middle of that seven years, 42 months later, the man of sin will stand in the third temple in Jerusalem and commit the abomination of desolation. And Jesus said, when you see that happen, and then Luke 21 says, when you see Jerusalem encompassed with armies that, that both happens at the same time. When the, this Muslim Assyrian man of sin stands in the temple, Jerusalem is going to be surrounded with armies and it's going to be, he said, when you see it surrounded by armies, you know, the desolation of Jerusalem is, is nigh. And he warned all the Jews that live in the West bank to flee to the mountains for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor shall ever be. So that's, 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 the great tribulation, 42 months leading up to the battle of Armageddon, at which time Jesus Christ returns to the earth. And at the same time as when the dead in Christ rise and we which are alive and remain should be called to meet him in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So we're going to be resurrected and raptured at the same time Jesus returns to the battle of Armageddon. And so he described that great tribulation there in the 24th chapter and in verse 29 he added this, listen carefully, listen very carefully. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, what days? Those 42 months that he just described, which is the last half of that Daniel 70th week. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. That's spiritual principalities and powers. And then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven. When? After the great tribulation. That's when you're going to see the sign of the coming of the son of man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from the one end of the heaven to the other. You have to understand the timeline that I just read to you. Jesus said he's coming with his holy angels to gather up his elect at the end of the great tribulation. So I'm going to run over here to first Thessalonians chapter four and verse 13, Paul told the Thessalonian church, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you, 
by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. This is the exact same scenario that Jesus Christ described in Matthew 24, verses 29 to 31. And so here we are at 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. He's saying the same thing at the last trump. If you go back to the book of Revelation and you see the discussion in the 15th, 16th chapter of Revelation about the seven trumpets, then you know the seventh trumpet is the coming of the Lord. That's the last trumpet. That's when Armageddon is going to take place. And that's when Jesus is coming. That's when the dead in Christ are going to rise. That's when the saints that are still living will be caught up in the rapture to meet the Lord in the air, not before the tribulation. And then if I, if I take you over to 1 Corinthians 15, let's see what this says. Uh, he said, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Let me find that verse very quickly because you need to hear that one too. In verse 51 of 1 Corinthians 15, behold, I show you mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye at the last trump. There is, that's three witnesses, folks. I just told you Matthew 24, 31, he talked about it, the last trump. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 is the last trump. And now 1 Corinthians 15 and 51, I'll show you a mystery. We'll not all sleep, but we'll all be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, this mortal must put on immortality, and when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? Grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. The strength of the sin is the law. But thanks be to our God, which giveth us the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. So, and then I'm going to take you to Revelation chapter 20, verses 4 and 5. Listen to this one. I've, I've given you three examples already of the trumpet sounding after the tribulation. Jesus is coming at the last trump, at the seventh trump. And that means we've got to see six trumpets first. We've already seen five, and we're going to see the sixth trumpet at that River Euphrates War coming up in the middle of the Great Tribulation. I've got articles on my website, and I've got videos on my YouTube channel that explains all this in great detail. We've already heard five trumpets sound. It began in World War One, and it... <laughs> I'm not going to go through all that. I'm just telling you, we got the sixth trumpet yet to happen. And then the seventh trumpet, and you got to understand the seventh trumpet, the last trumpet is not going to sound until you've seen the sixth trumpet. The seventh trumpet never comes before the sixth trumpet. And the last trumpet doesn't come if there's other trumpets still unsounded. It's logic, guys. Jesus is coming at the very last end at Armageddon to destroy his enemies and to gather up his saints. It's all one same event. So I'm going to 20 chapter of Revelation, verse 4. John said, I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. Listen carefully. John saw in this revelation the souls of them that were beheaded for Jesus Christ, for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Did you get that? John saw the martyrs of the great tribulation. He saw the men who were, who were killed because they refused to take the mark of the beast. In this revelation, John saw in the spiritual vision, he saw the saints that were killed 
during the great tribulation because they refused to take the mark of the beast. And he said they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Now listen to what he said. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. So you only got two kind of dead. You only got sainted dead and you got sinner dead. And the sainted dead are going to be raised up at the end of the great tribulation and the wicked dead are not going to be raised for another thousand years at the end of the great tribulation. Listen to what he said, verse five, but the rest of the dead lived not until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Say that out loud, would you? First resurrection, the first resurrection is after the mark of the beast. The first resurrection takes place after the men and women have been killed for refusing to take the mark of the beast. There's not going to be a resurrection before the mark of the beast. No resurrection. No rapture before the mark of the beast. No rapture before the tribulation. I've read four Bible passages right here, and there's more if you want more. Four major Bible passages that shows us the church and Israel are going to be on this planet during the great tribulation, during the time of the mark of the beast. Many are going to be killed because they refuse the mark, and those who survive will eventually be raptured when Jesus comes at the end of the great tribulation. There's not going to be two raptures. Somebody said, well, there is no rapture because the word rapture is not in the Bible. I'm telling you, Jesus said we're going to be caught up. The angels are going to gather us up. You read the story of the rich man and Lazarus, and the Bible said the angel came and got Lazarus because Lazarus was a saint. And, and the angels of God gather up the saints of God when they pass from this world to the other. And that's what's going to happen at the rapture. The angels of God, that's one of their chores, is to take the saints of God from death to, new, to everlasting life. And so when the angels come, Jesus is coming, the angels are coming, the great archangel is going to sound, the trumpet's going to sound, and all the dead in Christ are going to rise, and the saints of God that are still alive on earth are going to be called up to meet him in the air, changed in a moment in a twinkling eye after the great tribulation, after the mark of the beast, after the martyrs have died for the cause of Christ. And with that understanding, then I speak to my subject here tonight. And that is pertaining to the coming mark of the beast. How will we cope with it? The coming mark of the beast, how will we cope with it? Now, folks, this is a very deep, deep subject, and I'm only going to just basically introduce you to it tonight. We're, gonna, we're just going to start talking about it because there's so much, much more that could be said about it. But I'm going to refer you to the book of, of uh, Genesis and the story of Joseph in Egypt, because when Joseph was in prison in Egypt, Pharaoh had a dream and he saw, as it were, seven years of plenty followed by seven years of famine. He didn't understand it. He saw these seven fat cows and seven skinny cows, and he didn't know the meaning of it. And Joseph is the one that explained all that. And it turned out that the meaning of that was there was going to be seven years of feast followed by seven years of famine. And I, I think there's a correlation, at least a, some kind of a parallel between that story and the story of the last seven years, because we know that the mark of the beast and the great tribulation begins in the middle of the last seven years of Bible prophecy prior to the coming of the Lord. And so I would stretch it maybe a little bit to say that the first three and a half years are, are an opportunity to prepare for the great tribulation. Once we see the Pope confirm that covenant with many for seven years, then we know that we have three and a half years before the mark of the beast will become mandatory. And I've already speculated here on a previous video that I think we're going to see the mark of the beast in operation long before the middle of the week, long before that last 42 months. We're going to see a lot of people wearing the mark and a lot of people using the mark. I think the mark of the beast is going to be in operation long before it becomes mandatory. 
a lot of people will be probably millions, maybe hundreds of millions, maybe billions of people will be using the mark of the beast before, before it comes, becomes mandatory. But it, with all certainty, no later than 42 months before Armageddon, the mark of the beast will become mandatory. And uh, John's ex- described that in Revelation 13, beginning about verse 11. He said, I saw another beast come up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb, two horns like a lamb that's, and he spake like the dragon. That's speaking of the Pope of the Roman Catholic church. He looks like a lamb, but he talked like the devil. He exercised the power of the first beast before him, which is the European, uh, the world government based in Europe. And I've explained that in great detail much before. He exercises all, all, exercises all the power of the first beast before him. He causes the earth and then which dwell there in the worst of the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doth great wonders so that he makes fire come down from heaven on the earth inside of the men and deceives them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life to the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So at that point, the mark of the beast becomes mandatory and there's a death sentence for the most part on the people that don't take it. And he causeth all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he had that mark, the name of the beast or the number of his name. And here's wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it's the number of a man and his number 603 score and six. And we've seen that number on the mitre of the Pope of the Roman Catholic church. So the Catholic church is in control of the world economy, whether you realize of that or believe it or not, it doesn't matter whether you believe it, it's true anyway. And all this world money system is coming out of Europe and it's coming out from under the influence of the Roman Catholic church and the Jesuits and all their proxies. And we're seeing people like the United Nations, the world economic forum, the European union, European central banks, our federal reserve banks, the bank for international settlements in Basel, the international monetary fund, the world bank, they're all moving with lightning speed toward the implementation of the mark of the beast. And I can tell you right now with some certainty, (laughs) this may make you recoil. It may, it may take you by surprise, but I'm going to tell you what the mark of the beast is. It's called XRP. The mark of the beast is going to be based on a global economic platform based on a digital currency named XRP. And how do I know that? Because we're seeing the whole world adopt a whole new banking system right now. They're moving from the old Bretton Woods Accord system and away from a swift operating system to a new digital platform called digital ledger technology and it's based on the blockchain and it uses digital assets and it handles cross border payments within milliseconds. That means to say that you can send money from Canada to China in less than a minute or in less than a few seconds, even you can send money from Mexico to Britain or anywhere you want to send money in the world in the twinkling of an eye money is carried across that new banking system and it's built on XRP. And I don't know exactly what the final form of that chip will be. It's going to be an injection of some kind. It may be some advanced form of a vaccine. Ultimately it could be, it could be a chip, an RFID chip, or it could be some much more advanced chip. I saw a lady who worked for DARPA, the defense uh, advanced research projects agency, DARPA, who is now a senior officer with Google. I saw her on a Ted conference video with a golden tattoo on the top of her hand. It looked like a golden printed circuit. This woman I'm sure is probably worth many millions of dollars. One of the most powerful, uh, people on the earth, literally. And she, she showed that tattoo on her hand with great pride. And she said, this is the future. I don't know if it's going to be a golden tattoo on her hand. I don't know if it'll be a a rise shaped RFID chip, or I don't know what it's going to be. It could be nanotechnology in your bloodstream injected. 
It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter what the technology is, but you know as well as I do, it's coming. It's coming soon. Now, Joseph told them back yonder to gather up their harvests and put in storage to put up foodstuffs, to put up, put up grains for seven years so that when the prophesied seven years of famine came, they would have provisions for themselves and really for all the known world in that time. You know how the story ended. It was his brethren, the Jews that came down from uh, Canaan's land into the land of Goshen. And there they were protected. The Jews, the, the 70 elders of Israel were protected in Egypt because of the strategy that Joseph had come up with by the word of the Lord and I have to be careful to overplay this concept because the grave reality is that a, a, a massive number of Christian saints are going to die during the great tribulation because they refuse the mark of the beast. And there's no way around that. I may be the first one who knows. I can't tell you if you will live or if you'll die. I, I can't say if I will live or if I'll die, but there's one thing I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm not going to presume that nothing's going to happen because it's impossible for me to believe that. In fact, if you want to talk about things that are impossible to believe, it's impossible for me to believe that we are not in the last days because we are in the last days. These are prophesied times according to the word of the Lord. And, and I'm just going to go out on a limb and tell you, if these prophecies are not for our times, then I resign everything. I just, I just renounce anything and everything. If <laughs> what I see and know from this Bible, from studying this Bible, since I was a child, been preaching, I started preaching in the mid 1960s, 55 years I've been preaching this Bible. And if I'm wrong about us being in the last days, then I confess, I don't know anything. If this is not the last generation, I am strategically wrong about everything I know and believe. And I'm putting my neck out on this and I'm, 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 I'm staking my whole name and reputation on my perspective here. And I, I'm, I'm all in on it. I believe Jesus is coming in my lifetime and I'm not a young man. I believe I'm going to see the mark of the beast in my day. I'm going to see many of my brothers and sisters die because they refuse the mark. They might be killed or they may be literally starved out because once they don't take the mark of the beast, the Bible said that no man is able to buy or sell. And so I'm just going to talk really straightforward and I'm not going to presume you're going to agree with me. I'm not going to presume you're going to like what I say. I'm, I am going to kind of assume that I'll lose some followers after this video, but hopefully not. And that is to say that we need to prepare. We need to prepare. We need to prepare. Let me look up that verse where Solomon said, go to the ant, thou sluggard. Let me look that up. Proverbs 6 and 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer, and gathereth her food in the harvest. How long will thou sleep, O sluggard? When thou arise, at, when will thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little while, yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. Now, if you want to go to the great tribulation. 
100% unprepared, then help yourself. You say, well, I believe God's going to take care of me until it's my time to die. That's fine. I believe that too. You say, well, I've got faith that God's going to take care of me. Well, I'm going to tell you what James said about faith. Wilt thou know, O man, that faith without works is dead? You show me your faith without your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to, I'm going to be preparing. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I'm going to be preparing for the great tribulation. I don't know what the future holds. I know who holds the future. And I know what the Bible says about the future. It's not going to be pretty. I've been to Masada in Southern Israel down below the Red Sea or the Dead Sea, I should say. I've seen where 900 Jews fled from the Romans when the Romans came to destroy Jerusalem. I forget now how many years they lived up on top of that mountain. And after some time, they finally were confronted by Roman soldiers after they'd built an entire community up there and lived there for a long time. The Romans finally came. And before the Romans could come up the mountain and get them, after laying siege to them for months, they finally devised a plan where one by one they would, the men would kill off their families and then they would kill off one another until the last man standing had to kill himself. And their reasoning was they would not allow themselves to become slaves to the Romans. They would not allow the Romans to rape and plunder their wives and daughters. Now, the morality of that, I, I don't have any comment about that. I, I don't think that's the kind of a thing God ordains for us to do. And that's not what I'm recommending. But I'm telling you that all through the scriptures, all through the scriptures, God tells us, and I've, I've, I've got a sermon on this on, on YouTube called the biblical command to flee. You need to go listen to that sermon. It's the biblical command to flee. Three times in his life, Jesus Christ fled from people that were trying to kill him. He left town. He got out of town. In Nazareth, I think, it, I know it was in Nazareth, they were, they're going to throw him off a cliff, so he, he, he sneaked out of their midst. Uh, Bethsaida, I believe it was, and the third city. And Paul and uh, I think it was Barnabas fled from Iconium to Lystra because the, the Jews of that city had set out to kill him. And if you know, if you know that the day is coming, according to the prophecies of this Bible, that they're going to call for your hurt and call for your death. It's up to you. If you want to, if you want to go into that completely unprepared, I can take you to the book of Jeremiah. And I just, just this past week read the entire book of Jeremiah, the book of Lamentations. Again, I'm in the book of Ezekiel now, but I just, I just refreshed my mind on that whole scenario when the Babylonians came to Jerusalem to take the Jews. One of the, one of the prophecies that Jeremiah told the people said, when you get over there to Babylon, you, you build houses, you raise children, you plant crops, you take care of yourselves because if you'll behave yourself and cooperate with your captors, I'll bring y'all back home in 70 years and we'll restore Jerusalem. And that whole, that whole concept of just basically being cool for that 70 years. Don't fight with the Babylonians. Don't fight. Don't resist them. Don't, don't get in their face. Don't cause trouble for your captors, because if you do, they'll kill you. And I think based on that very same premise, you and I need to understand that world government is coming. I don't care what you think about it. 
I, we, I know I, I still got friends that think Donald Trump's fixing to be back in office in March. I'll be deliriously happy if he does, but I'm not betting any money on that one, brother. We'll see how we we'll see how it goes, but I can tell you this, even if Donald Trump were to miraculously come back into the White House in the month of March, Jesus is still coming, the mark of the beast is still coming, the great tribulation is still coming. I don't care what anybody says. And so I say, think about it. What will you do? You got a wife and children, you got a family, you got a job, you got what what have you got? You got grandchildren. You know, in the in the very simplest form, I can tell you this, the Mormons, the entire Mormon church has taught survivalism for its entire history. And I don't know all their theology behind that, but I can tell you this, there's nothing wrong with having food in your storehouse. There's nothing wrong with, and, and somebody says, well, the Bible said, don't let treasures for yourself or moth and rust doth corrupt and thieves do break through and stool. I'm not, I'm, I'm not talking about treasures. I'm not talking about excess. I'm not talking about riches. I'm talking about survival stuffs. I'm talking about having food and toiletries and life support in the event that you're going to say, no, I will not take the mark of the beast. How are you going to pay your light bill when the mark of the beast, when you don't, when you don't take the mark, how are you going to pay your rent? How are you going to feed yourself? Go ahead and answer me. <laughs> I can tell you this. We're not yet into that last seven years. And that means we do have, certainly we've got at least three and a half years before the mark of the beast will be mandatory. You know, theoretically, there may be pockets, places, maybe even in the United States where it becomes mandatory before it becomes universally mandatory. It might be mandatory in a few places before it becomes universally mandatory. You might face, I mean, we're, we're already seeing people losing their jobs because they won't take this vaccination. And I did see that there's a legal organization that's going to the defense of these people who are being forced to lose their jobs because they say that by law, you cannot be forced to take that vaccine. I don't know if that's true or not, but I know that some people are winning some appeals on that matter. And if you've been put in that position, maybe you need to check out those legal options, but be that as it may, I can tell you this, The Bible said we should be as wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Do you understand that David fled as a fugitive from King Saul for 15 years? For 15 years, David stayed out of Saul's line of sight. Did you know that? David was already anointed to be the king, but for 15 years, he was not crowned to be king, although God had already ordained it to happen because the enemy would not allow him to have his position. And do you know that after David became the king years later, his son Absalom became belligerent and Absalom rose up and would have killed him, I suppose. But Absalom sold himself to the people as a better man than his daddy. And he tried to overthrow the government and David had to flee. Then he had to flee from his own son, Absalom out to the wilderness and hide until God took care of his enemy. And not the least of all these examples is what Jesus himself told the Jews who live in the West bank. When you see that, Man of sin, stand in the holy place, committing the abomination of desolations, flee to the mountains, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world this time, no, nor shall ever be.
quickly. Stay out of sight. Stay out of sound. Stay out of the devil's way. Jesus said, agree with your adversary while you're in the way with him, lest he deliver you over the judge. And the judge delivers you over the prison and you got to pay the utmost farthing to get out of jail. And you may not get out of jail. You may not come up with bail. If you can stay out of jail, raise your hand. If you think you ought to try to stay out of jail, if you can, I think so. If you don't want a ticket for speeding, then don't speed. If you don't want to get in trouble with the government, then don't cross the government if you can help it. Now, there are certain times that you have to do the will of God. And Peter said that, you know, when, when they told him to shut up and not preach about Jesus Christ, he said, we, got, we must obey God rather than man. And there are some things that, are not, that can't be compromised. They're not negotiable. And preaching the gospel is one of those things. And being a Christian is one of those things. You can't sell your soul to the devil. But you can, by the help of God, stay out of the devil's way as much as possible and not create a problem for yourself or your family. So I'm going to move on and just talk to you in some very practical terms at this point and say that as this new banking system is coming into being, It has become very apparent to me, and I've studied this now since last fall. I've been, I've been studying this with great diligence for about six months now, how this new system, this new banking system, this new money system is going to unfold. And, I, I, and, I, and some of you have already been listening to me, and I get a lot of questions. I haven't, I haven't answered a lot of the questions because it's, it's a real massive task for me to try to personally answer all the questions that I get fired at me all the time. So I'm just going to answer them here on camera for uh, – for once and say that I hope you will be able to appreciate and understand what I'm talking to you about. There's a way that you can prepare for this time as best you can. And there's no point in me trying to say there's any kind of guarantees to it. I, 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 I haven't written any books on preppers. And survivalism. I have written articles in the past. They're not on my website. I've studied, I've studied being a prepper. I know, I know quite a bit about being a prepper and I've, I'm, I'm actually gearing up to be a prepper. And if that galls you or upsets you, or if you think I'm a, a doubter or if I fear monger, I believe in that, then just don't watch me. If you don't like to hear me talk about this, then just don't watch me. Just, just go on to watch something else to watch some something else. If somebody knocks on your door and it's the, it's somebody from the city water department, they said, we're going to be working on the water lines here in your neighborhood for the next 48 hours. And we're gonna have to turn your water off. So we advise you to, um, Drop some water, maybe fill your bathtub with water for just miscellaneous use, and maybe put a few jugs of water so you'll have some drinking water. How many would you do that? Would you do that? Or if you if you knew a hurricane was coming through town, was going to knock the lights out for probably two or three weeks, would you would you do something? Would you prepare for that? Now I live in hurricane country. We we see hurricanes here every two or three years. And I've got a generator and I've got supplies for that kind of an eventuality. I'm talking about three and a half years. We're not going to have any money. Do you think we should prepare for that? If you don't think so, then that's fine. You say, well, I'm just going to walk into that blindly. Help yourself. Go ahead. Just, just walk into it absolutely blindly. Just pretend that it's all going to be fine and dandy. And say, well, I just refuse to worry about it. That's fine. And it may be that all I do to try to prepare for that will become to naught. And I'm, I'm willing to come to terms to that as well. But here's what I'm going to do. Between now and then, and I'm not in any position right now to make any great big moves. 
but by the help of God, I'm going to be doing more than I can to move into a situation where I can survive off the grid. And if that offends you, then just please just turn me off right now. I'm going to be trying between now and the next few years to move into an off the grid environment where I won't need electricity and where I won't need city utilities and where I won't need government assistance. I'm going to try to find some place where I will be out of sight and out of sound. <laughs> I, I can almost hear all the unlikes. I can almost see you unsubscribing to all of my stuff. <laughs> That's all right. I still, I'm still going to do what I'm going to do. And I'm going to tell you a little, I'm going to tell you a little secret about this banking system. There really is a way. If you stay with me this far, then this is my prize for you. I have a little reward for you for staying with me up to this point, because this money system is based on what's called cryptocurrencies. And for those of you who are willing to study this cryptocurrency business, there is a major opportunity for you to make a lot of money on cryptocurrencies before the mark of the beast becomes mandatory. Now I will tell you up front that at some point you'll have to get away from all of that. You'll have to walk away from all of that because at some point that cryptocurrency is going to become the mark of the beast. And at that point, you're going to have to bail out on it. And at that point, you, you better have whatever you need to have, whatever you think you need for that period of time. And, and let me just put a disclaimer with all this stuff. If, if I'm a million percent wrong about being in the last days, and if Jesus is not coming for the next hundred years, and if communism's not going to take over, and if the mark of the beast is not coming, it still won't help you. It won't hurt you to have some extra groceries in your pantry, or it won't hurt you to have a water well that runs on solar power. It won't hurt you to have a solar panel to turn your lights on at night. It won't hurt you to have a wood stove. No matter how wealthy you are, it won't hurt you to have extra groceries or extra provisions, whatever they are. I saw, I saw a, a prepper video here a couple of weeks ago. This, this guy was a very wealthy man. And he had a $7 million estate, a $7 million ranch. And he was, he could live completely without any outside help. And he, and he said, I want to tell you what, one of my best currencies, what one of my best reserve currencies for hard times. And he opened up a, a warehouse. And in that warehouse, he had, <laughs> I don't know, hundreds, maybe thousands of cartons of toilet paper. He said, that's my currency. He said, when hard times come, he said, that's worth money. You can get things for toilet paper. And you know what happened during the coronavirus, man, there was a raid on Walmart and all the grocery stores for paper towel and toilet paper. It's currency guys. All right. I'm gonna talk about cryptocurrencies and then I'm gonna quit. I, 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 I'm just going to dump some things on you very quickly. Surely by now you've heard of Bitcoin. Bitcoin was invented around the year 2008, and it was available on the international markets around 2012. If you'd bought Bitcoin in uh, 10 years ago, if you bought Bitcoin, no, eight years ago, you could have, well, no, yeah, let's go back with 10 years. 10 years ago, you could have bought Bitcoin for 10 cents a coin. You know what it's worth today? $42,000. Let me see. Let me see what the value of Bitcoin is right this minute. Bitcoin's price today is $47,831. Now, would you like to have a thousand Bitcoins in storage? 
What's a thousand times 47,000, about $47 million. I'm not recommending you to buy Bitcoin because I know a lot of things about Bitcoin that doesn't bode well for its future. I don't think Bitcoin's going to survive in those big numbers indefinitely. And the number two coin is one called Ethereum. And if you'd have bought Ethereum eight years ago, you could probably got it for a dollar. And today it's worth, let's see what it's worth. About $1,600, I think. But even Ethereum is going to uh, have some troubles because there's some technological problems with it. Ethereum right now is selling for $1,784 a coin, one coin. So if you had 1,000 Ethereum coins five years ago, you could have probably bought them for $5,000. Today, they'd be worth millions. And the same thing is about to happen to XRP. XRP is selling right now for 52 cents. When I first, when I first discovered cryptocurrencies in August of last year, which is about six months ago now, in fact, today is the 11th, exactly six months ago today. I studied it for about a month and I decided I would buy some coins. I bought. I bought a coin called ADA six months ago and I bought it for 10 cents. And you know, that coin right now is worth 91 cents. So, so the thousand dollars that I put in that six months ago is now worth $9,000, $9,110. And that's what's happening in cryptocurrencies. And the reason I'm telling you about that is because if you get smart about this stuff, you will have some money to put into your preservation. And I'm not going to get away from the fact that the Bible says that a lot of people are going to be killed for not taking the mark of the beast. I'm not telling you to trust in the arm of the flesh because that would be a sin on my part. But I can tell you by the word of the Lord that God intends for us to prepare for hard times when hard times are coming. That's the whole, that's the whole doctrine of the watchman. When God told Ezekiel, I've set you a watchman. Why do you think God sends watchmen to people to, to warn them of, of great calamities that are impending to warn the people so they can prepare themselves for impending calamity. And that's what the job of a preacher of the gospel is, is to warn people about hell and to warn people of hard times to come. So they will prepare their hearts and their minds and their bodies for those days. God told Joseph and Mary to flee to Egypt so that Herod would not kill baby Jesus. God told them to go to Egypt. God told Abraham to go to Egypt back in his day to protect himself. I could go story by story through the entire Bible, Old Testament and New Testament, and show you story after story after story after story where by the will of God, people made preparations for difficult times that were soon to come. XRP will be the number one currency in the world in the coming years because it is going to be the platform across which all the money in the world is going to cross. It's, it's, like, the, it's like the railroad rails. It will settle cross-border payments worldwide. I heard someone say, I think there's something like $70 trillion a day that passes through the banking system. And that $70 trillion is going to eventually be passing through the, that XRP coins on the XRP platform built by a company named Ripple. You hear, you hear the word Ripple? Though That's the company. It's a $10 billion company now, and they're the ones that invented XRP. And XRP is going to be the future of money. The World Economic Forum is telling all the central banks that they need to convert to XRP. The International Monetary Fund has endorsed XRP, the World Bank. 
all the central banks, the European Central Bank, the Federal Reserve Bank of the United States, the Bank of England, Singapore, Japan, India, go around the world. You're going to see all of these central banks are gearing up to operate on the XRP platform. You can buy XRP coins right now for 52 cents. And the day's going to come, they're going to be selling for $10 and $50 and $100 and $1,000 and maybe $10,000. Maybe one, one uh, analyst said he thinks it'll go as high as Bitcoin now is. One, I heard one guy today said he thinks XRP will go to $35,000 per coin. I, don't, I can't vouch for that. I'm not a financial analyst. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a CPA. I'm not a tax accountant. I'm none of that stuff. I'm just a preacher and a Christian. But I do have a brain. And I try to use it when I can. And that's what I think you should do. You should use your brain and prepare yourself as best you can. And you can buy into these cryptocurrencies and I'm going to take a long time, but there are, there's a variety of exchanges. Just like if you have a retirement plan and you, you, you have a 401k or you have a IRA or a Roth IRA or whatever, you buy money in Apple stocks or you buy uh, Tesla stocks or you buy Exxon or whatever it is you buy, you buy that through a broker. Well, you can do the same thing with cryptocurrencies, except you can do it yourself on your phone right here. You can download the apps for these cryptocurrencies. One of them is called Uphold, U-P-H-O-L-D. I, I recommend you download the Uphold cryptocurrency exchange. It has a whole list of coins. And if you'll watch YouTube videos, and I'll put some links under this video of some uh, cryptocurrency exchanges or some cryptocurrency teachers that you can follow on YouTube that'll teach you all about. I, I don't really want to teach everybody about this stuff. I don't think it's my job. I just want to tell you and introduce you to this stuff. If you want to act on it, act on it. Some of you don't have a lot of money. Some of you got a little retirement. And I can tell you this, the, the global economy, I, I mean, I'm listening to financial analysts every day and I'm hearing people saying that the, the market is going to be crashing here in the next four or five months. I don't know if that's true or not, but I can tell you if it does, they're talking about losing 40% of the market value. So if you got a hundred thousand dollars in a 401k and that crash comes, you're going to have 60,000 or less. And that's going to hurt. It's going to hurt some of you. So it's going to affect your retirement. And so you can download the uphold act. Uh, app or you, there's another one called Voyager. You can download that on your phone. There's another one called eToro, E-T-O-R-O, eToro. There's one called Coinbase. There's, there's jillions of them. Some of them don't operate in the United States. The four I'm telling you about do operate in the United States. Uphold is my choice. Voyager, eToro, Coinbase, and there's several others. But you can connect those accounts to your bank account your checking account or your debit card or your credit card. You'll have to get approval. And if they give you a hard time, contact their support, send a support ticket to them or, or, or look up the phone number and call them and, and talk to somebody and ask them to connect your exchange account to your checking account or your cards. And then you can purchase as little as much of that stuff as you want. You, you, you can do a hundred dollar purchase right out of your checking account into your cryptocurrency account. You can buy like XRP for a hundred dollars. You'll get about 200 XRP coins right now. And if that goes to $10, you've made 2000. If it goes to hundred dollars, you've made 20,000 for a hundred dollar investment. And that will help you to prepare for the days that are ahead. And I don't want to get too far into this and I don't want you to think I'm trying to sell you some get rich quick scheme. I'm trying to teach you something about preparing for hard times. Cause I'm telling you hard times are coming on this world. And so the four strongest coins I'm seeing, and I'm not going to go on, I'm not going to elaborate on this. If you are interested in this subject, then take the hints that I'm giving you and go do your homework, do your own research. There's thousands, thousands, thousands of YouTube videos that teach all this stuff. Watch all the XRP videos you can find or watch XLM. XLM is going to make a lot of money for a lot of people. ADA, ADA is already gone almost 10 X in six months. Another one called VET. There's, there's, 
there's 9,000 of them on the market. If you look at the top 100 of them, the top 100 coin, just pick out some and study them. And if you see something you like, you see something that impresses you, then that's, that's something to consider buying. And then when you're ready to sell it, it's just like anything on the stock market. You buy low, you sell high. You watch, you watch the graphs. When it's down, you buy it cheap. When it's high, you sell it and take profits. I, I personally don't trade this stuff. I, I buy it and I hold it. Whatever little bit I buy, I keep it as long as I can. And I, I give it time to grow. And hopefully before Jesus comes, hopefully before the mark of the beast comes, I'll have enough money there that I'll be able to do something with that. And I'll be able to buy the kind of supplies and things that I hope that I'll have in the event that I survive the mark of the beast. And with all that said, I'm going to tell you when Paul went to Jerusalem on his way to Jerusalem, he stopped where I think it was in Antioch, if I'm not mistaken. And that's where he met Agabus, the prophet and Agabus grabbed his waist belt, his girdle, as it were, and he tied it in a knot around this waist. And he said, that's what's going to happen to the man that wears this girdle. When you get to Jerusalem, they're going to bind you up and throw you in jail for the cause of Christ. And all the saints stand around here in this prophecy said, Oh, Paul, don't go down there. Don't, we don't want you to get hurt. We don't want you to get thrown in prison. And Paul just looked at them and says, I'm ready not only to be imprisoned if I have to be, but I'm ready to die for Jesus Christ. And I want the world to know right now. And I want you to know right now that if it's the will of God for me to die for this gospel, I'm ready to die for this gospel. If it's pleasing to God for me to live, then I want to live. If it's pleasing to God for me to die, then I want to die. But if it's, if it's God's plan for me to live, then I want to be prepared to survive as best I can, as long as I can. And I don't want my demise to be my own fault for not having prepared. And that's all I'm going to say to you tonight. And ultimately, whether you're physically prepared or not, you need to be spiritually prepared. And that means you need to be born again. You need to be repentant of all your sins. You need to have all your sins washed away in the blood of Jesus Christ. And that comes through the waters of baptism by obediently being born of the water and of the spirit. Jesus told Nicodemus, read John three verses three through seven, read that you must be born again. You can't see the kingdom or enter the kingdom. If you've not been born of the water, and of the spirit that's water baptism in Jesus name and in the baptism of the Holy ghost speaking in other tongues, like they did on the day of Pentecost, the Pentecostal experience is for every man, woman, boy, and girl on this planet. You need to obey the gospel, receive the Holy ghost, be born again. Find an apostolic church in your area. If you don't go to an apostolic church an Acts two thirty eight church and a holiness church that will teach you to live holy and godly until Jesus comes. And that's my message to you tonight. Thank you for joining me. Please follow me on all my social networks, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Rumble, BitChute, MeWe, Gab, and hopefully Parlor will be back soon. And go to Amazon, buy all my books, nine books by Ken Raggio, The Daily Bible Companion, two volumes. Volume one is the Old Testament Bible Lessons for Daily Reading. Volume two is the New Testament Bible lessons for daily reading. The big book, the Daniel prophecies, God's plan for the last days. You need that 700 something page book to teach you all these major Bible prophecies for the last days. Get ready. A book on prayer, a great powerful book on prayer, a book on the great doctrines of the Bible, including the new birth and a book called treasures of darkness, how to see the glory of God in your darkest trials. You need all those books. And if you live in the United States, there's a link below. You can purchase all nine books and I'll ship them free for $125. And so check all that out. If you can make a donation, there's also a donation link below. If you can't pass these videos around, click share, share them with your friends, pass them around by messenger, by Twitter, uh, pass them around by even by text, send people to these videos and tell them to watch them. And I'll see you next time. God bless you. Good night.